Your Excellency, and the Lady Cook, Chairman Oliver, Her Excellency, Mrs. Florentina, Adenike Okonga, Nigerian High Commissioner to Jamaica, <laughs> members of the Diplomatic Corps, our community, dignitaries at the head table, other dignitaries in the audience, ladies and gentlemen. Sir Howard, I seek your permission, sir, to engage in just a wee bit of wagering because I see where I can win a smallish fortune by doing this introduction within a specified time. Simply put, sir, I'm not following my friend Keith and I won't take as long. But I see that my chairman Oliver Aware as he is of my admiration for our guest speaker, has challenged me to do it, that is to say the introduction, within acceptable limits. If I do it, I will win $100. If I take longer and, became, and become an unwanted guest speaker, I will lose and I will have to pay Oliver double. In US. US. In US. So, I now invite somebody to lend Oliver a hundred dollars. And I also invite somebody else who has a reliable watch to time me because I'm, I'm just about to start the real introduction. <laughs> Your Excellency, ladies, and gentlemen of this August body, I mean August in March. This book that I have up here, The History of the Internet, written in 1999, has the following at page 138 to say of our guest speaker tonight, and I read, in, no, I need my glasses. In 1989, mathematician Philip Amagwali shocked the supercomputer industry by performing the world's fastest computation, 3.1 billion calculations per second using the power of the internet. The result, as computer scientist Marshall Lakes put it, were, and quote, phenomena, blah, 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 three times faster than a supercomputer. It continues. During the late 1980s, the US government listed petroleum reservoir simulation among the 20 grand challenges to scientists in America. Back then, supercomputer simulations were locating oil reserves with only 10% accuracy. Harnessing the power of parallel computing, Amagwali was able to effectively simulate petroleum reserves and change oil exploration history. In 1989, breaking his breakthrough in 1989 won him the prestigious Gordon Bell Prize, known as the Nobel Prize of Computing. Interestingly, ladies and gentlemen, in the beginning, our guest speaker was given clearance for the use of a conventional supercomputer by telephone. But when he turned up in person and presumably didn't look like the person who was envisaged by the gatekeeper, was denied access 
on the basis that supercomputers were for serious researchers. <laughs> he was therefore, in a manner of speaking, forced to become a genius. And this he did with distinction by pioneering a new discipline in computation intensive calculations called massively parallel computing. In the process of this pioneering work, he harnessed the power of 65,000 computer processors in parallel and created a supercomputer, his now famous connection machine that created the world computing record of 3.1 billion calculations per second that we just spoke about not too long ago. This speed has literally forced the international computer industry to discover him and, in turn, make him into the sought-after international consultant that he now is. Interestingly, as a result of this work, he has forced a Mr. Craig, who those of you in the computer industry would know of, he has forced Mr. Craig to literally eat his words because two months before his breakthrough, Mr. Craig had pronounced very authoritatively in New York that there was no future whatever in the kind of work that your guest speaker was doing. Tonight, you are witness to the fact that it is Mr. Craig who was wrong and must now follow in the tracks laid down by our guest speaker tonight. For doing what the expert said could not be done, the number crunching community has since been calling him by many names and have given him many awards and recognitions with perhaps the leading one to date being the one that Keith mentioned, that is to say the Gordon Bell Award, which he won in recognition of his oil simulation technology. This technology is causing oil wells all over the world to more than double and sometimes triple the amount of crude oil that is recovered from each reservoir. Can you see, ladies and gentlemen, the relevance of this breakthrough to both his country of birth, Nigeria, and his country of, what's the, the word is, domicile? I got it right? The USA? Not to mention his country of residence for the past two weeks, poor us here in Jamaica. So I give you a man whose genius is impacting our life every day in every way. Anything that requires big, large, massive, number crunching, such as your local or international banking transactions, your weather forecasting, and the search engines behind your computers have been impacted by his work. Finally, and I know you have been waiting to hear this particular word. I present to you a man whom some have called a father of the internet, who this book that I read from has called The Bill Gates of Africa, who former President Bill Clinton has called one of the great minds of the information age, who I, Lloyd Vermont, <laughs> Call a near future Nobel laureate in massively parallel computing, 